Welcome to this week's edition of Focus on Connecticut. I'm Tom Appleby. Throughout the uh, session up in Hartford, we have been bringing in members of various committees and talking about the legislation they've been working on. Uh, and so this week we thought we would talk with two members of the Finance, Revenue and Bonding Committee, and maybe we'll get to those issues, but we have much bigger ones to talk about. First, let me introduce our guests and then I'll set the stage. Uh, State Representative Jonathan Steinberg is a Democrat with the 136th District, which is Westport. And State Representative Laura Devlin, a Republican with the 134th, which includes Fairfield and Trumbull. I thank you both for coming by. Thank you. Great to be here. It. So it has been an intense week uh, up at the It's been an intense session because you face enormous, you, we all face enormous deficits, somewhere in the range of $920 million that have to be covered this year. And then going forward, the next budget, something in excess of $2 billion. And so uh, the legislature came up with its proposal, which was short of the 900. And then the governor this week came out with his, which would cover uh, the deficit, uh, but it does it in a very painful way for many communities, you including you. It's not a serious proposal? So, well, it can't be a serious proposal, right? I mean, I, um, for the governor to come out and cut education in our towns and to say we're not increasing taxes, that is a direct contradiction. So the choices and where Just to explain what you're saying, if the budgets are cut, and some budgets, I think Fairfield has already so Fairfield been voted was zeroed on, out. it was against the law for you to change that. Budget. It hasn't come to the RTM yet, okay. but there is a lot of work going on locally in our community to find out now what because it has passed the board of selectmen it mm. has passed the board of finance and in Trumbull the other town I represent they're due to finalize their budget in about a week's time so not only is it a, a, a bad uh, decision in terms of a place to go to make a cut the timing is also horrible and you know it, it we've we've really got to step back and say when is enough enough when the budget that was passed last June that was forced on our state, we knew it was horrible at that time and it was out of balance. It wasn't going to be balanced. In December, we were called back in a, in a special session to address the deficit. We just did a mitigation a couple weeks ago to resolve about $300 million that had us out of budget this year. And now we're facing $900 million. We can't be doing the same old thing. And that's $900 million if tax revenues come in on target. So let's see, because last year that was not, not at all all the case. So when you say you can't do the same old thing, yeah. and you don't want to do the kinds of cuts that you're talking about that are so egregious, what do you do? Well, you know, in the Republican caucus, we've been talking a lot about long-term structural change. We've Our biggest expense at the state is the cost of our workforce at the state, right? We're the largest employer in the state, and that can be a problem. Now, our state workers are great, and they work hard. Um, but we've got to start making some long-term structural change to bring down the growing liabilities that By we have to fund that. are we talking contracts? So, and what we're talking about are probably things that, you know, uh, the citizens of our state would be surprised at. Like, isn't that already happening? So, for example, uh, yes, contracts. To have labor contracts approved by the legislature. That is not the case now. And in fact, for the first time in a long time, with the Yukon contract that had come up, if it is not addressed at the legislature and it, it expires after a certain period, it automatically goes into place with no debate, no discussion. After only 30 days after it's appropriate. Yes, mm -hmm. so that's you know, one piece. Also, you know, we have incredibly generous health care benefits as state workers, um, more so than in the private sector. And what we're not talking about is to m put an undue burden on state workers, but we've got to at least come to some kind of parity which maybe is increasing or, or contributing to your pension 3% of your pay. Mm -hmm. Increasing health care premiums, maybe 5%. A copay for uh, medicine, $5. Increase it by $5. These are not draconian big things, but what they would do is cap these growing liabilities that we have, and we can't afford the workforce that we have. We need have. to take a break. The, uh, there are 2,500 workers who probably won't have to worry about that because the governor is eliminating their jobs. Has started already this week. When we come back, let's talk about that. The governor, the legislature, and the workforce. Back in a moment. 